Yeah, we, we've really got, we got cheated out of this here. All right, so here we go. Question, who can we pick on? Uh, we can pick on Preston, because he seems like an amazing student. Let me see, lots of them. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, so let's just take away today's date. How many times have you read your notes? No lie. Look at me in the eye. Over here, tell me. Only whenever I was doing the notes. How many other times? But but Preston had seven times that he could have read over them. Okay, so the next time y'all are driving to school to collegiate to the to come read over them. Um, I Netflix and drive. Thank goodness I'm still here. <laughs> but but I'm serious. We need to read our notes once a day. So that way you can get to the point where you're like, oh, here's what I need to know. So on page one, you should be able to spit this out. The definition for momentum is the, um, how difficult it is to stop an object. The SI unit for momentum is kilograms times meters per second squared. The variable for momentum is a lowercase p, not capital. Momentum, the more mass it has, the more momentum. The more velocity it has, the more momentum. If my object's not moving, then my object has zero momentum. And, and but did I ever say the, S, um, the uh, formula? No, because we don't need to memorize that. Okay, so we don't need to memorize the formula. That's what we need to memorize though, those five, six things. Okay, the next page is impulse. Impulse is, let's do the same thing. Impulse is how hard it is to stop an object. All right, meaning that the more momentum it has, the more impulse I have to have to stop the object. Now, but impulse is also dependent upon time because you may need more or less time to stop that object. You might, okay? The um, SI unit for impulse is the same as it is for momentum, kilograms times meters per second. And the reason why kilograms times meters per second are the same one is because they are like mirror images. And I know it sounds weird, Right, FT and, and MV, they're not mirror Miss Munson, but if we were to derive them, they would become mirror images. So what we're saying is if we have this much momentum, we need to have this much impulse to stop that object. Now, because it has more momentum, it may take more time to come and stop that object, but we could still stop that object. All righty. Um, the variable for impulse is a capital J. I have no clue why. That's what we need to know on this page. Now, we said that impulse and momentum are identical to each other. And because they are identical to each other, then that means that I can set them up equal to each other, which is what I did here. But because I know that, I have to know, because it's not on the formula chart, that I can also derive that's what this means over here derive this equations differently and change them up how i need to so down here on the practice problems okay i set them up for you but i did not go and um, do them so let's go ahead and work on them there we go practice problem number two i told you it was j equals p because they are equal to each other and in this case, I can derive and change it up a little bit if I needed to. So J actually equals FT, but P equals MV. Either I can put the M and the V, but guess what? They told me that the momentum is 2000. And hold up, if I know momentum, then I actually really know impulse. So this number can not only be the P number, which is 2000, but it also, it could be the J number. We can say J equals FT. In this case, we can solve for the F. T is five seconds, divide by five, divide by five. We did not do this on the video. F equals 400 newtons. Alrighty, next one, number three. 
on number three though it says imagine the same scenario but in this case we're going to do it with a different amount of time what's going to happen to the force well if i do the same equation ft equals p and i say f equals point sorry f times 0.4 equals 2000 let's do the math because it's not on the video divide by 0.4 divide by 0.4 f actually equals 5000 newtons in this situation we took more time to stop the car in this situation we took less time to stop the car so time causes a big difference in force for any object whether you break the car or whether you slam into the wall or whether um, you punch somebody in the face as hard as you can or you barely just tap their face it's a huge difference okay on how it's going to feel that force now because we said that then on the video we said and on last week on friday we've got this area on cars that literally crumple up so when we have car wrecks now they look just destroyed and it looks it's total ruined but whenever it ruins or totals that means that the whole time that this is occurring and it finally comes to a stop that's increasing the amount of time to come to a stop so that way we can decrease the force on your body all right and so we said that last week on friday this is video this is all videoed and on the video i give you some more examples if you touch the padding on the dashboard on cars yeah they're hard but if you push down enough you can feel the padding helmets are not the same versus 1972 helmets thank goodness people were still getting too many concussions in the 70s 80s even the 90s they were having a lot so they've got and they've changed the padding and the helmets to help decrease the amount of force so that way people aren't having brain injuries follow through jose altuve is a small little um, baseball player he's like five something not much taller than me and he doesn't have big old arms and big old thighs and legs he's regular old person but he is somebody who can hit an amazing amount of home runs because he changes the time on the bat and ball when they're in contact and when he does that it's like a chain reaction it causes the velocity of the spin of that ball to change which causes the distance of that ball to change and he's able to make home run hits or so many of them not because he's so strong the next part over here is video i know i'm going through it quickly but i know those videos are already up that's why i'm going through it quickly now the conservation of momentum we know the conservation of mass means you conserve it the amount you have before is the amount you have after well here it is as well for momentum in physics the amount you have before equals the amount after this is our next equation the problem with this equation is that they give you one basic equation and you have to manipulate it depending on the situation okay so that's what we're doing today so let's go ahead and manipulate it I, if I can find it, here it is. This is last year's notes, so that's why they're different, sorry. So we said on the video that there's actually three types of collisions. We have elastic, inelastic, and explosion. All righty, so considering those three, Elastic collision is when two objects get into a collision and they bounce off of each other. So let's visually draw that out. Object number one collides with object number two. Here's where our colors come into place. After the collision, object number one bounced off and is not attached or stuck to object number two they're still separated okay object one and object two bounces together or hit bounce off and there goes the collision 
collision has happened. No problem. But not all collisions are like that. We have other types of collisions. For an example, the big fish eats the little fish. Now they're together as one new. Um, somebody chews bubble gum and throws it in your hair. Now you got bubble gum hair. It became one. Okay. Um, oh gosh, that makes me upset. I can't stand when those students get those good pencils. Just I mean, that's a decent sharp pencil, and you toss it up to the ceiling, get it stuck. Now it's a ceiling pencil until it's one stuck together. Right. So when things stick together in a collision, we call that inelastic collision. So object number one is going to collide with object number two. And after the collision occurs, look, I'm going to make it bigger. Object number one and number two are smushed together. OK, so object number one and number two now are smushed together. Why did I draw it a bigger, obviously bigger size? Because I want to make sure that we are all on the same page because the law of conservation of mass from chemistry last year that you learned, I can't just sit there and lose that. Uh, it can't be gone. And if you watched the video and heard me talk about this, this is like, for an example, that's me and that's the, the table. And when I walk by the table and I hit like my leg against the table, I didn't just lose like three pounds. Like, what? I'm gonna go throw myself against the, the wall, my whole body, and see if I lose five pounds in that case. It just doesn't happen. Right, the law of conservation of mass is there. So I need to conserve both masses. And I'm making such a big deal because that's where students mess up on the equation. This side is what we call explosion, which is the opposite of inelastic. We start off with one object. Now I have two objects, one plus object two because they broke apart so the example here is there's a kid on a skateboard and he jumps up or he falls now it quote unquote exploded and there's a skateboard in the kid the bird and the fish he has a fish in his mouth he drops it they quote unquote explode and now they're separated i had a student in class that gave me the example um i ate some bad food before i came to physics and then in physics class, I threw up. <laughs> Explosion. That's a good example. But just like inelastic collision, though, you have to conserve the mass. Meaning that if you, and then as you start to run out the classroom, and you did it, threw up three times, you got to pick up all three throw ups and weigh them all plus you. Because before you threw up, all of that was one mass okay here's what i need to make sure that i tell everybody the problem is do things just break into two no what if i had a glass plate and i dropped the glass plate it's probably going to break into i mean 77 pieces for all i know i gotta pick up each piece and the reason why i'm making a big deal of that is because in our math equations if it's 77 pieces then you have to include 77 pieces in the math equation, okay? So is it always two? No, I can have green, yellow, red, and blue. Then on this side, I need green, yellow, red, and blue, okay? I can have green, yellow, red, and blue, then I need to have them all over here. Same thing over here. I can have multiple that ends up like that. So I want to make sure that we, we definitely, okay, I got you, Ms. Munson. I understand. Now let's go ahead and let's turn the page because we need to get to the next part, which is, here we go. On the video, I screwed up on this part. When the bumper cars actually hit with each other, that's really an elastic collision i wrote down inelastic so double check right there i screwed that up on the video i apologize okay now after that correction let's go to this now we're putting this into math equations all righty got a little bit of time left 
Here's my math equation over here. This is the basic equation right here. That's the equation you get on the formula chart. But you need to be able to change the equation due to the situation. So if I have an elastic collision or an inelastic collision or an explosion, so you need to know all three of them and how does it look like? One, two equals one, two. All right. Go back to your colors, please. One, two equals one, two. Okay, I got that. Now I need to make my equation look like that. One, two equals one, two. So let's do that. My equation, yellow plus red, are gonna get into a collision and they're gonna equal, yellow plus red. Does my math equation, is it color coded like my picture or drawing? Sure is. I don't have to do anything to it. I leave it alone. This equation is called the law of conservation of momentum equation. Okay, law of conservation of momentum. And it looks good. That's the easy one. Here's the ones where it starts to get all kind of jacked up. Let's look at inelastic collisions. In this case, I start off with a yellow and a red and look at the actual circle. It's bigger, right, because the law of conservation of mass. Now they're smushed together. All right, now I need to make my equation look like that. Let's start off with the left side. That's easy. Yellow and red are going to collide and equals, wait a minute, I need to make this into one yellow red. So I can do that and let's do this. Let's, let's just cancel this out. Why not? Get rid of it. One, two equals one. But there's a problem in this case. My problem is due to the law of conservation of mass, I need to maintain the mass of every object. So this cannot just be X'd out. It's carried over here and we say plus M2. Now I have, this side is M1V1, this side is M1V1, which is yellow, and I have M2 and M2 that's red. So now I have yellow red over here. So I was able to color code and make my equation match. One, two, one, one, two, one. I do that by rearranging that equation. And so the explosion is just the opposite. So let's go ahead and do that one. I've got one object that explodes and breaks into multiple pieces. And we're just using two. I don't know if it's quiz or test day, but they're going to have it where it's like three or four. So you're going to have to manipulate and change it. Let's go ahead. Let's do the right. That's the easy. Yellow and red. And the left side needs to be changed up. Does it matter if you if you cancel out the one or the two? It doesn't. But what does matter is the mass is always carried over and we say plus M1. So the one is yellow, which is yellow. The twos are red. Okay, now I know class is over and there's a couple of things that we haven't got through. I know, I mean, I can talk forever. Homework number one, I didn't get through, and I know I said get it out, so keep it out. Just give me a second on that homework one. Because I didn't get to go over it with you, I am going to video it for you, and I will also, if you have it today, I'm going to stamp it. And so, I'll see that.